so she'll be able to definitely back with a BF, yep, 2100 and some boots, maybe? Selling to, selling to pots for her boots, okay, interesting. Uh, in any case, it's going to be Kane now going for his first back, level 5, he's gonna, after this clear, he's gonna have that level 6 advantage for another gank opportunity. Both of these lanes here, bot and top pushing, so Kane's got an opportunity there for sure. This little Heimer turret's not going to do much there for them, but uh, that Morgana skin, really the only thing I can highlight for the DePaul's team right now. Fall burn! JK. Um, uh... Yep, that's going to be the first armor item coming in for the Scion here. Both uh, Tide Planner is now finally level 6. Kane with an interesting control word here. I think he's Warrior of a Warwick Invade, but I think with a Warwick still level 3, holy heck, he's got a ways to go. Um, and I really, I'm really interested to see why DePaul did not want to commit for that, uh, for that red buff. When they had the vision that they knew that Warwick wouldn't have time to go back to red, but, uh, excuse me, Kane would not have time to go back to red after they spotted him with the invade, but um, in any case, IT making good work here. Aphelios only with the Dorans against the Caitlyn BF is not going to have him looking at any kind of trades until he backs. Uh, but with a Warwick of his gank of his own, he's going to have a level advantage here. Both summoners available. Spell Shield, though, not going to help it out. The trap landing, they could honestly killed off the warwick it's gonna be one auto it's gonna finish it look at that synergy between players nice e there one more double kill there for the caitlin and really poor mismanagement of spells there for depaul let's iit take complete control of that bottom half of the map pretty much right now and disparogi as well staying consistent also with a nice cs lead of his own here 55 to 35 um looks like he won't need any help so really Kane is just at his pleasure right now to just figure out where that Warwick is and possibly go for uh, the hunt on him, but it looks like he's going to be going for the flash engage. Ari with no mana won't even be able to charm him away, and flash I think just to scare her off, but uh, Disparogi should know that the Ari did not have flash, not sure if that was communicated, but it's okay. IIT already... Within the 8 minute mark, reaching a 4k goal lead, 5 and 0. Not, plates not really taken down, 1 here, there for the Kane. But um, besides that, a little bit of play pushing now. Finally, IIT bot lane getting a plate of their own. Oh no. It's going to be... Uh... Bobby being taken, taking down the Scion in a 1v1. I did not catch that. I can do a quick replay of that right now. Um, I think I got a notification that my OBS had cut off. Apologies for that. I think uh, checking out this 1v1 here, just Bobby taking all that damage, plus the ult landing. DePaul uh, getting, winning out on that 1v1, but the Scion still having his sums available should probably just be looking at a TP to get back. And uh, yeah, I apologize for the stream quality. It might be a little bit lower than usual, but the uh, reason for that being because um, it's uh, still the holidays for some family back here at home, so uh, sharing internet resources makes things a little bit harder. It's going to be a big play coming here across with this huge invade. Warwick getting down here. Sion pushing out a TP. Once looks like he wants to go for a fight of himself. He's going to go for quartering that Morgana. She does not have the bush. Uh, she does have to plan to get her back out. But all members of uh, IIT now on the bot lane looking like they might want to be going for this first Infernal Drake. It's going to be Sion there helping him out a little bit. No TP though is going to make him be a little bit behind, especially when he's level 7 still a level behind already. Urgot's already going to be hitting possibly the uh, two level advantage, maybe? I don't think so, just one level right now, but if the Scion dies again, it might be two levels. IIT, tons of pressure here going for maybe another plate within this next wave will be three plates. Four minutes left before the plates fall, so 
they've got time to chip away at it. Excuse me. Rai's now finally walking back into lane. I think he used his ult earlier in that skirmish here in the jungle. Could be wrong, though. Now with a th almost 40 CS lead, DePaul doesn't have much of a choice here. And I think, like what we said earlier, it's like despite the champ maybe being broken, IIT just able to outplay uh, the members here. Urgot taking almost next to the none damage, he, him getting all of his empowered autos off. Bobby instantly losing out on that trade, going to force out his flash, has the Urgot follow up on it. Bobby looking like he wants to reply back, but he'll only just be able to go for the wave clear in the end. And again, we were talking about that two-level advantage. We're going to probably be seeing that pretty soon, unfortunately. Kane, though, wants to be replying back in his own kind. Finally takes some vengeance there. No summoners available for that Urgot to get him out of that situation, but he is going to have a TP maybe to come back into lane. It's going to be Kane, though, going in for the Rift Herald on his own. And he will be just in his own right to do that. Actually, a three-level disadvantage between him and the Warwick, actually. Just so I, uh, just so we have a clear picture of literally the uh, jungle difference in one of those like memes that you say. It's it's literally insane here. But it's going to be a lot of autos doing work here. The E not coming in through, though. Spell Shield wouldn't have helped either. But in a reply, what the heck? Rift Herald at 2k, IIT knew, DePaul knew that they were going for it, and unfortunately at too low of the damage, no smite there to help him out, Ari gets it. Unfortunately, forcing the flash off into Sparokin, that's a really uh, bad moment there for the Hawks, as their Urgot is pretty much their sole member uh, that's carrying their, game, their team right now. Scion now desperately behind two levels, not finishing out his first item, looking like... Uh, Urgot's going for that Trive. Oh, excuse me, Black Cleaver, not Triforce. Oh, nice Q there landing, but not going to be doing much. Caitlyn with the Storm Razor available, as uh, opposed to Ophelios going for Essence Reaver, I think. It's going to be the Rift Herald being placed there in the mid. Going to definitely help get a bunch of turrets there, but not first tower contention yet, for sure. Uh, gets two, three plates, I think, down for them. Gets Warwick some time to solo XP here in the top lane for himself, finally hitting that level 6. So, small misplay there from uh, IIT's jungler and top lane communication. Um, Urgot definitely trying to see how he can impact the team outside of lane. So, good on him. Uh, what am I getting in chat? I'm saying, go IIT looks fine to me. Okay, well, hey, if the stream's still alive, then that's I'm, I'm happy with that. I was a little bit concerned... But DePaul should be concerned about those Kane ganks. Morgana Black Shield still helping it out, but uh, it's going to be Kane roaming around the jungle trying to see what they're doing. Ari does have a little bit of preemptive vision, but not going to see Kane make short work of these Raptors. Interesting roam by Leona. It looks like they might want to go for a gank here in the mid lane. Uh, no minions still to help anything out. That's going to be a really, really risky dive. Ward's going to spot out Warwick as he heads to the Raptor camps with no help. Pirate Windows finally takes another gank of his own. Oh my lord. Heal being used, Flash being not used, but the Caitlyn ult is going to be taking out the uh, Wicked Sc taking out Aphelios there. Wicked Scotty not able to uh, get the kill. Warwick. Not a lot of damage actually with him. Don't forget, he's so behind. Heal helping it out. Nice flash to block the Morgana Q if that was intentional from the pirate windows. And that's the that's what I call the cinematic buff, actually. Uh with uh, the near the newest warriors coming out. No! Ooh, okay, a little bit of a outplay there, but that's finally going to be Urgot coming down with the shutdown. Uh I, okay, so the way that the Caitlyn did it, it's I thought she, she did dodge the Q, but she did it through Q and then E instantly right after to get out of it. But uh, a walking crab will not be able to get you away from that in any case. And uh, let's see. Urgot roaming here, trying to see what he can do for the team. It's going to give enough time for the sign to get some chunks here. No more turret planning available means that uh, 
Bobby finally able to help himself out a little bit now. Lessons to bleeding only by one level. Uh, definitely just one level, but with the Urgot finally coming up to top lane, no TP available. Looks like IIT wants to finally make an attempt at this dragon. They are 1-0 and in terms of dragon counts. And again, Warwick, if he continues to just waste more time trying to go for the buffs, he will not have a stronger smite than the Kane. And again, IIT being on the wise choice here, just trying to see if they can help out for this Urgot. Looking like Cheese and Eggs coming in here for the gank. No flash available here, but the crab is too fast here with the ninja tabis as well against the almost full, well, not a full AD team. They've got the rise. Haven't really talked too much about it since, but this Brogy has been making steady work here with continuing to push the lead there in IIT's favor. Right now, just both teams here in the mid and bot just jockeying for vision for, the, for, for that dragon, really, essentially. But, spoke too soon. A gank happened just as I, uh, just as I was saying that there was nothing happening. This time coming here from the cane on the Ari. Going for the flash here. R unbelievable. I did not expect that range of ult, that ult to actually follow through, but the damage from this rogue from, from that warwick doesn't exist. That Q, just the Q landing on a level 7 warwick just instantly deletes Warwick off the rift, and he is not having a fun time with not even one item being finished. Looking like he's going to try to go for a cinder hole for some tankiness, but could be too little too late, unfortunately, for him. Uh it's going to be Kane finally going here for the buff, but he's not going to have any members here helping him out. Doing a good job here, pushing the dragon out, getting a little bit of vision denial there for them. As long as they block the shots. Okay. No smite needed, though. Kane finally finishes it off. IIT hitting now the f a little bit past the 15 minute mark. Uh. Already cutting off uh, DePaul having to take the long way back in. That's just how oppressed that they are being right now. And again, Kane just being everywhere on the map. So many escapes that he has available. But if he stays here too long, he's going to get hit by that R. He's coming around. IT looks like they want to converge on the fight. It's going to be another fear there. On to the cheese and eggs. No damage yet. Nice ult there from Leona to keep the members in place. Another flash being used from the Morgana. Ari though. Keeping herself into place. And while that was happening, Rise coming up there for a 2v1 onto the Urgot to help stabilize Bobby even more. Cheese and Eggs is finishing up the Krux here for himself. Ari finally trying to push a little bit here for this turret. But again, just that CS lead, that gold lead that Rise has is going to have him pretty much a full item? Two items? Flash initiation there from the Rise. He wants to go for it. Uh, no Ignite. On the Rise's side, Ari preemptively bursts hers, not even putting Rise near uh, the danger zone for that. Honestly, you could probably just keep going if he, if the Ari decides to overstay. Another Q landing, decimating Ari now to only just about 600 health. TP there from Urga just to see what he can do, and that's going to be top lane uh, from DePaul being at the same level with, uh, with IIT's Rise. Second tower fell down earlier. I think that was the top lane there from Scion. Uh, bot lane had already made first turret progress. So, again, gold lead still expanding, but trying to see, you know, what's the winning condition here for DePaul if they want a chance to get back in. Second Herald has spawned. Could IIT make another mistake like that again? It's going to have him go right in. Fear and the damage there from Urgot just instantly taking him out. A charm there from the Kane is going to have him very low. Not able to get out, unfortunately. One auto there from the Kaelin is going to just instantly pop her right off. Doesn't look like they're going to have any more progress. That is a insane dive between two turrets. Uh, just flexing their uh, superiority, I think, just a little bit there. Looking like IIT trying to see... Clearing out all of their camps there. Continue to starve out that work. If anything, we're going to probably be seeing a ban. Nice tower thing. Whatever that does. I forgot what the name of it is. That helps uh, the, those top laners finish off those turrets. Um, and Bobby finally now back into the game. Even, even with the Urgot. So Urgot now losing out on his uh, advantage really. With only... Uh, yeah, a little bit into gold lead, but finally with the experience catching up, up, that's okay. Again, we already talked about the science, like, 
These guys are just meat shields, but you can't just go into a fight like that. It's going to be Harold being taken down here. Does Bobby want to look for the fight? He has the ult available, is level 2. No, it's going to be action happening on both sides of the rift there, with uh, most of I DePaul's members distracted as the Warwick dies again to the bot lane there from IIT. Tier 2 being looked upon maybe favorably here for the Hawks, uh, for the bot tier, but doesn't look like we're going to be seeing any more action. Just going to be another little bit of a ramp between the two sides. And he is a fast boy. That is a 595 movement speed. Kane, faster than Leona with Moby Boots, imagine. Uh, and that's no Cloud Drakes either. Let me just also add that. Um... Again, IIT just continuing to starve out vision, starve out experience there for DePaul. It's going to be Cheese and Eggs coming in here again for another game. He gets queued right into the face and takes aggro. He won't actually be able to get in through that. The Flash not going to be help helping out. Oreo flexing her support muscles there with a nice stopwatch play. Might actually have enough for his own use if she's actually going to intend that for her first item, which is pretty ballsy. I don't normally <laughs> go for Zonia's first item work, but I guess if they're just trying to just purely play for the for the kit then they've got something in mind that damage from the from the uh rise scares Jin adc to the point that he blows his flash preemptively again rise with his uh rift herald still available and dragon spawning within the next uh, couple minutes just has it continue to push wicked scotty flubs the ult completely stops the work in place though Gets a nice knock up there onto the Urga. Can IIT continue to layer the abilities? Rise is pushing out the damage where he can. Wicked Scotty, though. Dangerously low. Disbrogi's though. Still full health. Could he do the 1v3? Disbrogi wants it. Nice dodge there onto Ari Charm. Caitlyn here now finally to help out with some auto attack damage, but no more waves there. He's gonna <laughs> go for the Herald right on top. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. 8 HP with that headshot. Barely enough able damage just to do it. Literally a cannon minion's hair breath away from it. But the shot from downtown! Urgot lands it onto Leona, takes her out of the game. Nice trap there from Leona. Enough armor though to keep the Urgot alive. Kane soloing the uh Kane soloing the dragon for himself. IIT just with only about 500 health left on that inhibitor. Doesn't look like they want to commit anymore. Too scared about maybe just not having all of the members present anymore. A uh, little bit of unlucky there from both sides for IIT. First with the Caitlyn headshot, then second with the uh, ultimate Michael Jordan shot from Urgot landing that. Caitlyn won't be able to take that on her own. Again, just to, just crossing the I's, dotting the T's here for both both members uh, for for IIT as they just take out some plating. Uh, excuse me, take out some tower health, clear out some camps, and uh, three level advantage now. This is uh, for, for that cane. So honestly, if IIT wants to look at a Baron, now could honestly be the time for it. <laughs> uh, so with the Elemental Drake, it looks like the Cloud Drake is what's uh, giving the help for the members there. That's going to be an Ophelia stuck in a rock and a hard place. And now, just with that pick, does IIT want to be doing any big objectives like that Baron? It's going to just be... Going for the tower here. Pirates should be able to get that. Nice. Able to finish that off. Scion just wandering his way up top to make see what he can do. But rise damage there is prevalent. But the ult from what the... What? What the... What the... Uh, I guess uh, Urgot wanted to taxi to the 1 and 0 death, but that's not going to be enough for him to get out. Kane, though, uses that welcome distraction to uh, take care of the Ari. War tries to ult to see what he can do. That could be Cheese and Eggs finally falling down, trying to see what he can do to get out. It's not the ultimate, not going to land, but the Warwick will finally be able to finish it off. Lots of trades happening all over. Morgana support being taken down. They're going for the turret dive here, of all things. Disparogi barely ha hanging on with the Ceres Embrace shield. Pirate Windows trying to kite what he can, but that damage from the uh, Warwick is too strong. Ophelia's finally trying to come out where he can. What the heck? He's going for the 1v1, the absolute mad lad. He's going to do it. No. Oh, my God. Oh my god! Oh my god! 76 Wicked Scotty Flex. What a absolute chat. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god. Not to mention that the Knight's Foul plus the Warden's Mail helps things out too. Plus, I think he had a little bit of health back as the Caitlyn uh, was auto-attacking that ward to get some back with the Knight's Foul... Uh, with the Knight's Foul passives in... Uh, yeah, redirect some, some health healing, I think, right? Heal for 12%, yeah. So... Everything as it should be. Uh, team members finally going with the back. Caitlyn now with a good lord. Double gold advantage of the Aphelios. Kane with 3k above. Just a huge ADC difference here. Kane instantly going to be going for his ult. Not sure about that. They're not going to be able to clear that ward in time. IIT giving pings that they want to go for that Baron, but support and top lane trying to see if they can use their tankiness and cc to just hold any, any members off as they go for the three-man approach depaul looking like they're going to give that up though no members they're going to be contesting it that's going to be making short work of it with a mountain drake to help them out red team is going to be taking it and we are in a baron power play i gotta look at getting a uh a stream overlay for that like how like tyler one does it i think that would be fun to incorporate but um, again, I think right now it's just a formality at this point for IIT to close out their games. A couple more backs there from the Kane and Sion to get themselves here. But uh, IIT's already got to coordinate this together if they want to be doing something. Really, all tier 2s to remove. Now just the inhibs is going to land with the Morgana there. Uh, and Leona. Morgana having to ult, that's not going to help things out, especially that she has the Zonius available, but Sion going to ult himself right into there, uh, fluffs the Q a little bit, but I think he should be okay with the tankiness, it's going to be 2v4 members essentially, IIT now finally coming in here to clean things up, another Kane ult, they're going to help things out, what the, uh, Bobby misclick with the flash, I'm going to presume, going down with the first inhib down, Baron buff still up and available, I think at this point, just a formality, as I mentioned before. IIT going to be closing this out with a pretty confident start to the game. 53k to 36k gold, 29-11 kills. And that's going to be the Hawks taking game one of the series. Well played. Oops, not surrender. GG's. That was fun. Uh, taking a quick look at some stats. Yeah, definitely MVPs for the Caitlyn. Just really pushing herself out so hard in the, uh, within the 2v2, uh, 2v2 in the laning phase. And also the uh, a nice 2v3 outplay I think we saw earlier. That was really well played from both sides. Not just the Caitlyn, but the Leona able to layer the CC and, uh, and that Q stun. It's just really strong uh, with that combination. And then... Yeah, Aphelios, despite the, uh, uh, I guess in DePaul's ADC's hands, was just not able to really make uh, his time worth it, unfortunately. Almost going even with Morgana uh, damage is never, is never really a fun thing as a support um, when you go even with your ADC, or out-damage your ADC especially, um, especially with AP Morgana, actually. Um... This Barogi, just pretty consistent, uh, pushing out with actually, in fact, a perfect KDA. You know, Rise is just one of those champs where it's like, you don't really see him necessarily, like, pop, pop off, like those flashy types of champions, but if you leave him alone too long, yeah, that's gonna what be what happens when you get the most damage on your team with the 21.9k damage. Urgot tried to do what he could for his team, um, but unfortunately just, you know, two, three fed, ex extremely fed members, uh, can't really do much even with uh even with the full ad uh pressure well yeah i don't i didn't really see too much interaction between rise or God, so i'm just gonna say mostly ad he had the ninja tab eyes trying to go for the thorn mail but it's just not enough unfortunately yeah just being the most gold in the team for it um respect though i'm gonna try be interested to see if iit uh if depaul's going to respond in kind I think when we saw what they went with their picks and bans, they went with the, um, they went mostly for AP champs. They went for Fizz, they went for Brand, they went for Lee Sin. Maybe it's going to be two ADCs, maybe taking the Kane out again. Uh, we'll have to see.
But uh, going back into our pick band screen, let's update the scores real quick. That's going to be 1 and 0 there now for uh, uh, the Division C team. DePaul going to have to take some time to think about going to game two. What's the next step? Uh, do they have to uh, look at prioritizing different different picks? You know, maybe the Aphelios just not able to be working out with the team or the team just hasn't had enough practice with it or or maybe just a complete uh a re a remapping of of how they want to be playing uh the game instead maybe going for like a more passive adc um and just try to go for the top lane carry if they go for strong bruisers trying to let the the scion just be able to take the brunt of all that damage and they're just constantly chipping away at the back as opposed to as opposed to like the more bruisery fight in every corner matchup that you can do with like Warwick and whatnot. It's uh, I think they've got to do more of a single target selection. Use uh use the stronger phase a uh, laning phase from Scion uh from from DePaul's top lane to try to see if they can put jungle pressure on Dot maybe to get him ahead of the game. Uh that's gonna be me getting the invite now finally. Hop right into spectate. Thanks. And then um, we'll be getting started uh, in a quick second. I don't, let's see, anything playing in chat for me to respond to. Playing Leona without Conqueror, what has I at TE become? We're, we didn't play Leona. Oh, I know we did. We played the, we played the uh, Leona support, that's right. I thought they played, uh, I, I haven't played, um, Leona's support at all, but I predicted that she would become popular last season, that she only became popular at the end of the season. Uh, Jesus, I think I've got to, like, if I'm going to be playing against Leona's, I need to work on more tank supports, because I hate, I think the reason I transitioned out of, like, the, the, sh the shield heal e-girl support type of, like, uh, you know, the uh, Janna, Nami types, like, I played a lot of that season 7, and then I just got uh, my butt handed to me multiple times against Leona tanks that could just land at E and then you're just instantly trapped. You get a, a Kate trap right under you, you put a Jinx trap just like two Teemos in front of you, you're you're pretty much screwed. Um, unfortunately. Uh, that's what made me switch to like tanks like from Alistar. So like even if you get caught up, you just put the shield in front. Got nothing to worry about. Um... I think it's going to be about five minutes until we get any more action on the uh, picks and bans. So we'll just go on a quick break. Um, but then when we come back, game two, Illinois Tech here on the map early. 1-0 against DePaul Blue Demons 4.
All right. Looks like both teams are starting their pro draft phase right now online for the picks and bans. So that looks to be on underway. Uh, I didn't get sent a spectator link, so won't have much to uh, say anything until we actually get into the official client's pick ban phase. And then we'll do another three minute break, unfortunately. And this is just kind of that weird transition period between the two games. Um, appreciate everyone uh, that's in chat today uh, with all the feedback. I will uh, try to moderate my conversation to not be so biased towards uh, IIT members and try to be more holistic, but uh, sorry, caster bias, my bad. Um, looking like it's going to be the same lineups uh, across both sides. Still Bobby, Cheese and Eggs, uh, top jungle, just Brogy mid, Pirate, and Wicked Scotty there in the bottom lane. Um, I think, uh, yeah, same, 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 same roster lineups. No, no players switching out here. It looks like, um, a couple of bugs looking like they're coming across here. But besides that, both teams look like they are ready to get going. So we're prepping here on our side as well. And IIT though, looking like for game two, they have selected to be on the blue side. Uh, for game one, so when we get into the in-game client, we'll do a quick switch. Um, it's going to be a Garen ban happening again. I think we saw that earlier, too. Let me see if I have an old history screenshot of what they had. Um, yeah, they did They did Garen, Soraka, Jinx, Ash, Nautilus for IIT. Looking like they're doing the Garen and Soraka once again here. Um, it's going to be, though, instantly for DePaul replying back with both, with two picks that were already used in game one, the Kane uh, jungle that just made Warwick uh, his expletive. I was, that also rhymes with female dog, and then uh, Leona's support. Uh, again, just so many outplay opportunities, especially that 2v3 bot lane. It's going to be the Sivirdo taken away once again uh, for Pirate, and then Jinx also going to be uh, taken out with the first uh, first half of uh, band. So looking like IT wants to stay consistent. Looking like they're going for a different play style too with already the Riven top being instantly first picked. They're looking like Bobby wants to be flexing some of that 1v1 muscle as opposed to uh, the tank first tank wet noodle fight. It's going to be Urgato picked again here for DePaul. Uh, now going for another type of booster type, but here with Vi. So Vi with the cinematic buff. Uh, and uh, surprisingly, if you build her like with AD items, not necessarily tank items, it's actually really, really painful to get ganked by a ViQ. I think ViQ plus E plus one auto will instantly just chunk out like three, four hundred damage. Like, it's not fun. Um, it's going to be though, uh, LCS order wise, it's going to look like it's going to be the Lee Sin and the Rise there picked for uh, IIT. So. Not really seeing the tanks coming across yet, which makes me worry if uh, looking like IIT wants to be playing confidently here, just in the pure 1v1 matchup, looking like they might have to go for a quicker game than normal if they hope that they don't get uh, out-tanked by, by that DePaul lineup with the Urgot Vi. It's going to be Aphelios picked again here uh, for... Actually, before I go with the second round of picks, let's talk about the second bans. Uh, IIT going again for the Ash and Nautilus, so they kept all same five bands the same. Uh, they kept the same five bands from game one here for game two as well, but um, similar though for DePaul the second phase, they also banned Brandon Thresh game one. Now they ban it here for game two, but to round it off here for the rest of the picks, you've got the Caitlyn Vagar uh bot lane of all things and then you have against the aphelios nami no black shield here for uh depaul against a vagar black cage could be uh could be difficult but again vagar similar to like those uh traditional ap support types is once you blow your ability load you are pretty vulnerable and um going to be interesting to see what we've got going on here i think i think we're going to be seeing bot lane just flex their 2v2 muscles once again um 
I'm going, I think that they are confident in that matchup, but then with the jungle on top now, really the big change with Bobby going for a much more engage heavy, uh, damage heavy champion with the Riven trying to see if they can get, if he can get the 1v1 on the Urgot, it looks like. Same summoners used throughout pretty much. Uh, Nami Do is opting out with the exhaust as opposed to Vagar's Ignite. Again, IIT, I think once they hit, if they get that level two first, if they just instantly trap someone within an E and Caitlyn gets like three autos, they're going to be pretty in a pretty good place um, for the. Be in a pretty good place for, for the early game phase. So, with that in mind, we'll jump to a quick two minute break when we come back, though. Game two of. Uh, Illinois Tech Division C versus Blue Demons 4. Thanks, everyone. All right, we're good to get back going. Uh, we're good to get started. Sorry, grammar. Um, the uh, now game two between Illinois Tech versus DePaul Esports uh, Blue Demons Four, and this is going to be Illinois Tech's Division C team. For those that are just tuning in, this is now game two. IIT taking a pretty confident victory here in the game one, uh, with the Caitlin and Kane helping out the Hawks. Uh, quite a bit it's going to be caitlin picked once again here for pirate uh we're going to see if he's going to be able to uh, flex those adc muscles once again uh looking like iit going for a different approach here as they get their way into the first bushes they're going to be walking right in front of that nami oh my she hesitated for a second no wards being used though they're going to loop themselves all the way back around sweets being pushed all the way back they're gonna wave hi to the fans there the Q going to be landing on sweets. Imagine if he flashed because he was that scared. Uh, nope, that's not going to be the case, though. IIT taking complete control of this map. There are no wards there to spot out any of the Hawks, though. And looking like they're spooking Vi to go all the way back to her red buff to get a start on it. But I think for Lee Sin, it's better if you start 
red, uh, if you have that option. So looking like IIT is going to be going with that option. Closing out all division, but Riven coming here now alone into the bush against Urgot. Oh, it's going to be in a tight spot. Bobby has the flash, not able to get it over the wall, but any more follow-up? No. That's going to be a crucial summoners being missed here for the Riven, and she's going to be very low, um, which means that she's going to be at an extreme disadvantage. Bobby, unfortunately, not having the best of starts. But again, you know, this is another one of those things. We saw Vi once again just not start out. Already 20 seconds delayed in terms of going for the first buff is actually going to be... Uh, not as fun. It's going to be Vagar starting things off with the E. Actually, impressive. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, a couple of autos being traded and looking like IT already taking the upper edge here, though. Interesting. I don't normally interesting start with the E. I was not expecting uh, Vagar to go for that first. And again, first blood or got not surprising to see with the Riven already half health. It's going to be Nami with a stun there, getting a little bit of damage there. She's going to. Not pop a pot yet. Now she finally will. Or not. Maybe she's just that confident. Nope, there it goes. Level 2, no advantage coming here for bot lane first. But uh, IIT should only just be one away from that. It's going to be Lee Sin coming in for a little bit of pressure. Nothing else happening. Riven going to having to already, within before 3 minutes, having to use both for some. She's going to be in a very bad spot if she dies once again. But um, it's going to be actually Dorans versus Dorans. Interesting. Um, Wicked Scotty trying to put his E down the traps, not really actually landing and actually not really taking uh, the upper edge on that. Bobby trying to do what he can with the 1v1. I don't think it's going to be enough. It's not enough with the empowered Urga autos, and Bobby suffers once again with no TP advantage, means that we're already going to be starting to see that level advantage happening pretty early on. And again, I said the winning condition for. Uh, for DePaul, I think I has to be putting it onto their top laner. It seems that they are already starting off with that. Going to have to see what they can do. Nice trap there to keep the Aphelios in place. It's going to be another trap landing there for them. Nami's, Nami's W, though, able to heal the members right back up. And Vi going for an invader for her own type. Very aggressive, but it's going to actually be getting the kill there for Cheese and Eggs. Finally having a gank come out in favor. Him getting a kill is going to help things out for sure. Vi walking around her jungle, around Lee's jungle, not taking any camps, actually, either. It's going to be walking right into Lee Sin. He misses on that. Uh, looks like they, they want to fight. Can they help things out? The damage is there, almost. One more could do it. Kaylin has the flash available. Does she want to go for it? It's going to be forced to flash there. Ignite there for the Lee Sin. Ignite from the Vagar, excuse me. Can they get over? Damage from the Grot will take care of that, though. Very risky plays happening all across the board. Cheese and Eggs taking very low as well. Just barely over 100. IIT able to walk out with that kill. Finally, um... But Vi, unfortunately, not able to capitalize with that invade, wasting a lot of time with that. Chief Snake's going to try to go for the Raptors clear. Going to get himself dangerously low, actually, in the process. I don't think he's going to have the damage for it. Yep, misjudges it, unfortunately. Wastes the smite in the process. Um, well, that's going to be a blue buff there for, for Pirate. Going to help him with uh, throwing out as many Qs as possible. Um, honestly, blue buff is good on either one of those champs, really. Uh, Disparogi already putting a bit of a CS flex onto that Lux with a 20 CS to, with only the uh, one kill there with the Lee Sin's assistance. Riven looking like she has stabilized with the CS, but two kills is going to have the item advantage, and especially with the level 6, uh, could be spelling trouble. It's going to be Vido, is going to be spotted by a ward, I believe. Yep, they are paying it. They have to read on it. They're pretty sure that they know. IIT doesn't really need to do much here. Just needs to take the back seat. Going to throw a bubble out there from the Nami, but it's not going to do much else. Uh, Wicked Scotty pushes a little bit up here. Not going to be able to help too much. Another ward being placed down by Caitlyn. Going to 
keep an eye out for Vi if she comes down again, which she is after finally finishing up that ground. They want to be helping out that bot lane so much, but it's going to be seeing that that Vi is around, putting a nice trap there. Can they go any further? Nice Vagar cage to uh, detract any more uh, aggression. And again, that continues to whittle down the time from uh, from Vi clearing out her camps. I, th I think almost Lee's oh, been taking almost all of the scuttles for himself. It's going to be Urgot looking like he wants to go for gank of his own, but this is a level 6 Urgot versus level 5 Lee Sin. Not sure if that's going to have that damage coming through. He throws it out, not able to land. But in the 1v2, let's take a quick rewind back. How'd that happen? It's gotta be a Vagar cage. It is. He is gonna get stunned down in that process. Get, gonna get trapped in that process. Trying to force out the heal. One more auto will do it. The exhaust not gonna be enough. Too late for it. Nice little bit of positioning there from the Nami, but I don't think they're gonna have that damage to fall through. She should be just fine. Yeah, the exhaust, unfortunately, unless it was on cooldowns, uh, Nami should have used it much earlier, especially to be able to prevent the headshot damage from the trap. Um... And that's going to be a summoner list bot lane for DePaul there. Kate's still holding on to heal Vagar with an Ignite. Should be enough. It's going to be Lee walking for an invade of his own. Not going to be seeing the Raptors, but they are going to be seeing that Lee Q. Damage is barely going to be able to go through it. He didn't, does not have to level 6 yet. If he had it, he could maybe have secured the kill with the kick. He's coming back all the way around again. It's not going to be landing, but he's trying. Not able to land it. What a play there from Deluxe. But if you're not level 6, just why? I, I, I just... I don't respect that call from IIT. I think that they were just trying to take advantage of just like, oh, maybe just try to go for the outplay, just being too aggressive. Now Rise in a tough spot. Nice little bit of dodges there, though, from, from this Barogi. He's going to barely have to damage, uh, barely have to health to escape, excuse me. And again, Vi also not being level 6. Serves as a small disadvantage there. Aphelios is going to be stuck, taking a lot of damage from uh, the Aphelios turret, but it should be okay. It's gonna be Leeson looking like he wants to have. He's gonna to have to prioritize, unless he's no. He's put, just putting out the Q to see if they're trying out for the dragon. Not yet, but Riffin with the one v one. Let's take a quick look at that. Getting a nice bunch of knockups, trying to avoid nice dodge there of the ultimate. Bobby looks like he wants to finally go for it, in for it. Flash initiation, forcing to flash to Urga, and that's really well played there. You know. To have the Q to follow up with that flash is for Riven is really good uh, for her. Mm, Nami finally coming back to wait, uh, lane with her back with the Chalice for some of that mana reach and a little bit of MR there against the Vagar, I'm sure. They're going to have a ward there on the dragon so they'll know if they get anything started on its way. <laughs> a little bit of misplay there from the Hawks as they put two wards down. Um... Rift, uh, excuse me, Scuttle is shown up here, and uh, looking like Vagar wants to be putting a lot of damage on for that, but that could be having him be in a tight spot. Vi looks like she wants to go for something. You could one, can you one, you want that Vagar? I've got no clue, but you can get 3v2'd. Damage not going to land, heal's going to be used from the Caitlyn. No ultimate still to follow up, and the Vagar cage holding back the members there for them. It's going to be Vi finally going for the Scuttle. But this is going to be a level 6 Lee Sin. They want to go for the fight. Can he kick? It's going to be forcing out the Flash. From Vi. And Vi still being level 5 is again. Not helping their case out. Another Scuttle secured there for uh, IIT. A little bit of uh, Lens there to hold them back. The Bubble going to be able to do some work. But the damage is there from the Vagar ult to finally follow it up. Aphelios ult not going to be able to do enough. Rise, Disparoki wants to follow up. He's got the damage. Nice Q there from Cheese and Eggs. Again, well played. Their good coordination there from the Hawks with the four-man invade inside their jungle. Lux not able to help out. Again, she even despite just getting that one kill uh, with the Lee Sin dive, 
it's not enough. He's gonna go for the flash ult. Tell to have the damage going to force the luck to ult right back. Uh, excuse me, flash right out. Doesn't want to be dealing with that. It looks like. Cheese and eggs there to take his place. Urgot looking like he wants to go for the scuttle on his own, which he will be able to. Ping coming out from Ayat. He's like, where is the Urgot? Oh, wait. He's coming behind me, isn't he? Yep. So again, Urgot just trying to do what he can. Riven finally does showing a little bit of his CS lead. Uh, and a little bit of gold lead too. Helping to get some... Pl helps to get some plating down for Plating down for sure. Um, and again, we're just seeing these slow leads continue to build up. Caitlyn uh, pushing now 30 CS above the Pauls here. TP coming here in mind. Riven just waiting in bush. Maybe she's confident in looking at another one of people on. Trying to waste some of those auto spacing. The Urgot has already e forward. No flash there. Should just be a confident kill for Bobby on his own. But does this Barogi want to get the KS? No, he's not going to get it today. <laughs> Question mark coming. Why? Why take my kill? Oh, I just felt like it. That's probably what's going in with the IIT comms. Uh, Wicked Scotty though. Getting another kill off with his ult on the Aphelios. Again, just continuing to uh, be such a nuisance there for the bot lane. Like we said, I really wish that we could... We, we've already seen Divide come down two, three times. I really wish Divide would try to help out the top lane. I think I think the thinking must be like, oh, you know, I can hold off on my own 1v1 top, help out the bot lane. But in, in, in these cases, you got to just like push your top as, as, as high as possible, I think. Um, Vi is going to finally get an approach here with... Um, going to finally get her first scuttle. Uh, but Lee will reply in kind by taking the red buff away from Vi. Which now pushes him at a two-level disadvantage, actually. Ward is able to see catch out that Vi charging her, 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 uh, her Q up. Finally, a little bit of plating still available. Let's the uh, Urgot make a decent amount of work on that tower. First tower is still in contention. IIT trying to do what they can with only just a little bit of health left. In fact, all of the plating gone uh, from the bot turret. So IIT's got the most gold that they can from that. Vi finally coming down again, but Lee Sin is here at the Krugs just finishing it up. This could be a 3v3 match coming around. Vi is going to be coming around from the bush. Does do they see the Lee? It's going to be here. Level 8 Lee. Kick's going to come in through. Auto's going to finish it off. Still with that ult available. Does the Cheese Snakes want to go for like a backwards kick? Honest to God, I think I could see it. I He, he would actually have the balls to do that, I think. Nope. It's going to be him just getting right into a Vagar cage. No ultimates there to help her out. Nice dodge there for the wave. Follows right up with the Lux Q. And IIT pretty much cementing themselves with the first tower here. Caitlyn just continuing to chunk away at it. And the uh, the plays with a dive there on the Navi as well. Ryze using his ult to get himself in there as well. Just slow, methodical playing there for IIT. Just able to really work together to get their advantages, especially with the Lisa and Ryze. Lots of good synergy there we're seeing. It's gonna be Ryze taking the blue buff for himself. Dragon only one and only one dragon uh, being taken so far from IIT with the Infernal. Second one should be spawning pretty soon, I think, right? Um, Vi finally sees that she does not have a buff to help her out, but what can she do? She's not even gonna go for the crowds. It looks like she just wants to hover around maybe for. Uh, For a pick of sorts, but I don't think she's. Maybe she just assumed that the Krugs weren't available. Not sure about that. Um, it's going to just continue to waste a little bit more time for her as uh, Lee continues to just build up his lead all throughout. Going for another invade, in fact. He's going to walk right into Cheese and Eggs there. Uh, he's going to just dash right back out, though. Not going to be picked out. Aphelios got a, is going to see what he can try to do to get his first item. But um, Caitlyn with the Stormraiser and a BF is just going to be 
out damaging in pretty much every aspect possible. It's going to walk right into a Vi. That's a very small Vagar. Does she want to follow up with the ult? Can Wicked Scotty go for the 1v1? It looks close, actually, but the Q's going to be able to follow it up. Nice heal there to hold, keep Pirate Windows healthy. Damage not going to go through. Does Lux want a chance in ult? Good lord. Pirate Windows is going for the 1v2. He's going to be getting it. No tower to hold the field of safety. I think the Aphelios forgot that there was a tower. There was not a tower, excuse me. And Caitlyn is now turning on. He is going hard. Pirate Windows tries to flex the ADC muscles with the flash approach. It's not going to be enough, though. They want to go for the dive. Just broken there. Starting things off. Taking the aggro here. Nice Kate ult with the damage. But with Ryze able to tank it all, he should be just fine. Pirate Windows still healthy. And uh, Lee solos to Mountain Drake. Another 1v1 being taken here with Bobby. Trying to go for the 1v1. Ultimate not going to be able to come through yet enough. Not able to come in time, excuse me, for the Urgot. And that damage is so... <laughs> kick from Lee Sin. Uh, not sure if that was necessary, but it looks cool. So, um, Going to be the Cloud Drake elemental buff here for the map. With these zones here, for those that are new, gives like a speed buff of sorts. Um, I think she's an ex actually wants to go for a 1v1, but he probably could, honestly. It's going to be Ryze trying to do what he can to uh, clear out the minions, but he's going to walk right in front of a Ryze trap. Um... That's unfortunate. I think the members from DePaul, I think, just unable for this matchup to coordinate their plays together just getting completely outmatched from by uh by the Hawks uh ability to play together. Caitlin trying to do what trades that she can, but it's just so painful, I think, for them to take any kind of uh harass from to Caitlin. Yeah, that's cl that's clearing out a solid two almost two hundred damage right there for each auto, so that's doing good work. This is a 4v3 situation. IT's got one chance to go for 5v3 chance. They've got to try it. It's going to be rooted instantly. It's going to be the Vagar getting traded for it. Aphelios is trying to do what he can. Members still in advantage. This is still 4v3. Riven is not there in the fight yet, but can they can they can they fight it through? This is a big Urgot kind of. Lee Sin looking like he could maybe go back in with landing the Q. Riven now here finally in the matchup. Wait a second. Walks right into a trap. Caitlyn auto not in range though to finish it off and with a wave here I think they're going to try to see what they can do to finish off this tower before they look for any fights. It's going to be a tower here for tier 2 finally falling down mid. Riven now finally here to help out for the fight. Any more can the Hawks take? Nomly finally respawn uh respawning? I thought she died. Uh anyway now I'm trying to do what she can to get back into the game to help her out. But look at those autos coming in from the Caitlyn. Ah! The block, though, from the Nami able to help her out. Oh, my lord. Ha! He's, he's actually... Oh, my god. He wants to try to see what he can do. Taking one of those turret shots, but the Urgot is able to save him before he can finish it off. Vi trying to do what he can. The lots of CC happening. Four members of them. Vagar all cleaning it out. Good lord. Well, IIT's uh, all members inside the base right now. No minions to take them uh, away from it. They're going to just walk right back out. Try to see what they can do. This Lee Sin is actually so aggressive. And Lux did a good job of that one time when he wasn't level 6 yet and, and, and put him in his place. But uh, unfortunately... I think they're just not taking advantage of the, uh, of like the their ability cooldowns to try to take advantage of certain fights. Unfortunately, it's going to be an in hit finally falling down here for DePaul, IIT. Continuing to push the lead wherever they can. Thirteen K gold lead. Baron buff available. Another turret here for the in hit falling, but IIT is going to back out. It looks like for sure. Caitlyn taking a very greedy back. Uh. Gonna continue to waste the time of the uh, 
of the members here. And the, and the buffs, not to mention. Take a little bit of a break here. It's going to be the Urgot falling right into all members of uh, all members of DePaul. And no lack of vision, I think, will do that to you. As I just try to do the bush waiting game. With the Cloud Drake in spawn, and can they go for the Verdi's fight? It's going to be Vi trying to initiate with the Opa. No follow up, really, there. But the Caitlyn is going to be just two manning. The entire team. Wicked Sky taken very low. Able to just barely dodge out the shot. Look at that damage! Kick there just to hold things back. It's going to be the smite being used for a few trying to just hold them back. But Bobby finally dared to cut them off from the back. No inhib turret there is going to give Bobby probably smooth sailing to finish it off the Nami. Unless she finishes it off with the ult. That's going to be another inhib. And honestly, IIT can probably close out the game at this point. Looking like Cheese Nags wants to go for it. They are making the pings for it. Caitlyn, that fight the entire time just completely unaddressed by uh by by uh by the Paul not respecting the Caitlyn damage. I think a little bit of a dodge. It's gonna be the Vagar finally falling down, but Cheese looking like the Paul showing signs of life. They wanna. They want to keep the game going. It's not going to be enough, though. Nexus will fall. 28 and 7. 44.7k, 29.6k gold lead for the Hawks as they take another victory here. And that will do it for the series. Actually, in fact, as well. So, let's take a quick look here as we go back to the pick ban screens. Uh, perfect KDA coming across here now for the Caitlyn, and again, uh, and also having out damaging the uh, Rise mid this time, as opposed to Rise popping off in the game one. Um, actually, he did less damage than Aphelios. Interesting. Again, just one of those chances where it's like you don't see the impact really, but it's there kind of thing. Uh, MVP, I would say this game probably the Lee Sin, able to land in a lot of abilities. Putting, putting so much pressure on the Vi, initiating pretty much every invade and having his team able to follow up is really good. You know, it's not only just having a Lee Sin just 1v5 that's important, it's making sure that he has his, like, champs around him to, to have his abilities work in tandem with, like the Ws and whatnot. But, uh... Mm, yeah, again, Urgot tried to do what he could. I, I honestly thought the worst when he got the 2-0 and from, uh, against the, against the Riven. But, um... Looking like Riven able to prevail even despite that, you know, 0-2. I think I saw at one point still even in CS and gold by, by being 0-2 means that, yeah, Bobby was much more confident, I think, in this play style of just able to go with what he knows best as a champ. But I think um, in this case, it kind of worked out just because they had a much better understanding of how good or, or what advantages they could take against DePaul, you know, take advantage of their jungler, um... 0-8, I think, is just really unfortunate for Vi and, for, uh, you know, especially with the ultimate, it's just such a really nice crowd control moment, but unable to isolate the targets and, and have DePaul respond, I think, was a really big struggle. So you would just have, like, a Vi go out alone and then not able to uh, not able to do anything but sit there and then take, like, three Kate autos and then die, unfortunately. Uh, interesting that they still kept with the Aphelios Nami. I think they were just trying to... Maybe they're just trying new stuff this year. Or, or maybe they're just really confident with that champ. But didn't seem to work out again. Again, Kate's range and, and the harass from the Vagar cage uh, against mage supports is definitely one of the bane of e-girl support existences when you have that kind of uh, CC control that you can't control. Uh, like, in any case, unfortunate that they didn't have the Morgana. I don't think that was a ban either that IIT pulled out. So... Um, I don't know what the pick ban history was, like the, the order, but if they picked Vagar before Nami, and that if, if they picked Nami after Vagar, I think to me that just seems uh, like they didn't respect the, the potential for, for CC control from the Vagar. 
Um, but enough speculation. That's my team. That's my Reddit League of Legends analyst uh, moment for the for the day. Appreciate everyone stopping by for the stream. What's my chat interaction? Leona MVP. I pulled a Hashinsh in this game. I know the streamer. I don't know what that means. I'm I'm assuming that just means that he starts off. 0-2. I think Caretaker is Bobby, but um, again, appreciate everyone stopping by for today's stream. It's going to be a uh, great way to start off 2020 here for the Hawks uh, with their 2-0 and for the season, and we're going to be making sure that we try to continue our coverage for this year with weekend games wherever we can. Um, both teams, uh, there we have our League of Legends team that have their matches pretty much every Saturday afternoon. I think they rescheduled it this Sunday because of travel, but uh, we'll always let the uh, we'll try to let our viewers or people on our Discord know ahead of time. Um, the Overwatch season, I think Tespa season is going to get started pretty soon too, um, with uh, with matches probably happening in a month or so. Uh, late February is what I'm being told. Uh, so we'll have League of Legends for sure. Uh, but until then, you know, f feel free to do all of that. Follow, like, subscribe stuff on our YouTube and Twitch. Going to try to always just do what we can to improve the quality of the stream. We take the feedback seriously. If you give us serious feedback, if volume is bad, if if I'm talking bad, if I'm being too much of a bias, I, I take that all into the learning experience. So it's going to do it for us for this Saturday afternoon. Appreciate everyone watching and um, GG's to IIT and DePaul. Thanks, everyone.